Uh, Ronnie, I want to end with some comments from Attorney General Bill Barr. And um, on this, I don't know if you, if you saw these or not, uh, but one of the things he said in relating to lockdowns, he called it, quote, the greatest intrusion on our civil, civil liberties other than slavery, Ronnie, strong words. He says, you know, to put a national lockdown, stay at home wars, it's like a house arrest other than slavery, which is a different kind of restraint. This is the greatest intrusion on civil liberties in American history. He says governments do what bureaucrats always do, which is they defy common sense. They treat free citizens as babies who can't take responsibility for themselves and others. What do you think of that comment from Bill Barr? Well, I I think he's overstepping. I mean, people who are students of history and Bill Barr is a smart guy should know that Abraham Lincoln did away with the uh, writ of habeas corpus during uh, the Civil War so he could throw anybody in jail he wanted without cause. Um, uh, you know, clearly wanting to say, hey, I think they're a problem for the war effort. But still, there, there were a lot of things that <laughs> intruded on our civil liberties uh, be, between uh, the lockdown here and slavery. So I, I, I'm, I'm not about that, uh, <laughs> that, that uh, characterization at all. But his point remains that what you've done is deprive people of their right of freedom of assembly, free assembly. You've deprived people of due process. Uh, and separated them from their assets, being their businesses and other things. And so, and you haven't shown a really good reason as to why. You've shown a worry, you've shown a concern that that everybody shares and understands, but you haven't shown how this action is going to specifically address those concerns in a way that gives you that ability to override the constitutional rights. And if you just said, look, anytime you declare national national emergency, you can do that, it's like, well... Who gets to declare a national emergency? That would be the same government that wants to restrict your rights. That doesn't seem like much of a check and balance system. No, not at all. Uh, Barr had some other comments, Ronnie. I'd like to get your uh, your feedback on. He started from the Wall Street Journal. Barr tells prosecutors to consider charging violent protesters with sedition. Uh, as he's, <laughs> so basically, uh, you know, if you if you're advocating, I guess the idea here is if, if you're if you're a part of a group, let's call them Antifa or whatever, uh, who advocates for the overthrow of the United States government, and then uh, as part of your action is violence against, uh, say, a local government that could be considered sedition. Uh, what do you think of that? Is that overcharging? I think it's the definition of sedition. Okay, I, so. <laughs> I, I mean. I think he's clear. And and how could it be any different, right? If I want to overthrow the government and I tell people, look, I want to overthrow the government and I'm going to start overthrowing the government by trying to get rid of the police in my town. And I'm going to walk over to the police department. I'm going to fill a bottle of gasoline, shove in a piece of a T-shirt, light it on fire and throw it through a window. (laughs) Clearly, I've committed arson. Clearly, I've committed a number of other offenses. But my goal, as I stated it, was to create a domino effect to overthrow the government of the United States of America. I may be a raging idiot for trying to do it this way and have absolutely no chance of success, (laughs) but I'm still guilty of the crime of wanting to, you know, to do this. And so in my world, I think he's on point. And these, these people's statements and their actions are the clearest indication of what they say they want to do. When you hold a sign that says death to America, end of America, overthrow the government, and then you start burning things, I think people can put those together. How about, how about a sign that says burn it all down and then you <laughs> that clear? And then you burn it all down. Great. And so what we're coming back to is the same thing that we kind of, we hit here often, but, but we don't often say out loud, is responsibility for your actions. You bear responsibility for your actions. And while it might be separated some, and we're seeing that in some of these protests where people are not bearing any responsibility, eventually we all hope it comes back to you so that you have to answer for your actions because that's how our system is built. And if you don't do it, then you've ruined the system we have, which is called the rule of law, where all laws apply to all people equally. And once you end that, the wheels come off. So. Mm. Yeah, this story continues. To bring a sedition case, prosecutors would have to prove that there was a conspiracy to attack government agents or officials that pose an imminent danger, legal experts said. Now, I think there is plenty of evidence for that from Portland, uh, specifically going after government agents in that case, at least, right? Well, and and yes, and and to your point, I mean, they weren't going after local police officials at the beginning. They were, well, actually they were. But then once the federal officers showed up at the courthouse, they were specifically going to challenge and engage the federal officers. Mm -hmm. 
And it can't be more direct than I went to the federal courthouse because that's where the federal officers were. So I started the fire there. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. Seems pretty clear. Yeah, me too. And uh, last bit about Barr, you may have seen this. Bill Barr's uh, asked the DOJ to look in at charging uh, Portland officials and the, uh, for the BLM violence along with the uh, Seattle mayor for allowing the uh, Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone or whatever they're calling it to uh, to uh, to just go up and, you know, allow a police-free zone for all that time. So right. this would be sort of, a, and this, you know, maybe goes back to what we were talking about just a little while ago, was where's the, where's the responsibility for the government for, for a lot of the stuff that goes on in terms of lockdowns? Now, in terms of what you might call uh, gross negligence in a city or <laughs> intentional negligence, uh, that may be a step too far, but I'd be curious what you think about this. I Actually, hold on, let, let me rephrase that. Let me, let me rephrase that. Okay. To what extent... Is can a public what 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 point would charges have to be brought against say a mayor if they're completely derelict or negligent in their duty? What would be the threshold for something like that? Now it doesn't have to be the Seattle mayor here. It doesn't have to be our, our favorite America's favorite mayor Ted Wheeler out of Portland. Um, so I'm not talking about theft, bribery, embezzlement, but but this kind of thing. Uh, at what level would it take? Well, it, it, unfortunately, the answer is local. Uh, because statutes are written for each city. And so everybody's got their own threshold as to uh, what they believe uh, constitute a enough of a dereliction of duty, enough of a failure to perform your duties to remove you from office. And typically, it's a vote by a city council, or it could be a recall vote in the general population. Uh, but I don't think this has to go that far. I don't know that Barr has standing or the DOJ has standing in something like um, the, the Capitol Hill thing in Seattle. Uh, in Portland, Portland's interesting to me because it's something we talked about at the beginning uh, as the courthouse thing was going on and, and uh, Mayor Kate Brown and Governor uh, Ted Wheeler were saying, hey, the feds need to leave. Yeah. Uh, I, I said that, look, they should leave and they should leave with the understanding, the written understanding that the city would safeguard the courthouse and any damage would have to be paid for by the city. And so in my world, that's the federal standing. If you, if, if damage, if the federal property was damaged, the city should pay for it because you allowed it to happen. Yeah. And so I think businesses and uh, citizens, homes, whatever, that have been damaged in these cities, they're the ones that have standing to go back to the city officials and say, this happened because you did not enforce the law. And it's really clear you didn't enforce the law. And your reason for it doesn't really matter. You didn't do your job. And so one, the city should reimburse me for my damage. And two, you should be removed from office. And so I think those are the ones that have standing. It's going to be very interesting uh, whether or not it's going to happen in Portland. I don't know. I think I would be surprised if you don't see this in both Kenosha and in Minneapolis, uh, because you know what? These are middle America cities. And yeah, Minneapolis is a little bigger, 400,000, but still kind of a mi middle America sentiment. It's like, mm -hmm. wait a second. You allowed all this to happen, and I'm having to deal with all the aftermath and the cleanup and the rebuild, and you're doing nothing. And so I, I would be surprised if we don't see those sorts of lawsuits show up. Yeah, I think so too. And I don't know what came of that uh, Seattle lawsuit from those business owners from CHOP, but it was in the billions of dollars. And I think it, <laughs> very quickly after that, uh, Seattle's like, yeah, maybe we want, we want to break this thing down. Uh, so yeah, I think um, uh, lawsuits and monetary damages is probably the way to go and uh, leaving right. it up to the voters. I mean, I can't, I mean, Portland is a pretty lefty city, but I, I, I don't know the extent, well, it would just be another Democrat, but uh, I mean, any other Democrat probably was... <laughs> It's Ted Wheeler. <laughs> I'm a big fan of people choosing, right? Uh, I always want government to drop to the lowest level that can perform the task. And so my federal oversight of Portland is, is not on my radar. Uh, let the Portlanders, Portlandians, I'm not sure how they describe themselves, uh, but let them pick their own government and deal with it. And if they think all this is okay, it's theirs, right? I guess so. <laughs> I guess. It is. It's it's yours to it's yours to allow to to I don't know fall apart I guess yeah and people could just they'll end up moving out you know voting with their feet I guess as we're seeing out of uh, places like New York City uh, do you have any thoughts on that uh, city exoduses before we get out of here I think that's a, a big thing and I think it's going to be a long thing um, so you're seeing some some companies come back and so companies are, are recognizing that you do lose something when people are not together. You lose creativity, you lose the bonds among peers. And so businesses do want people back in the office. 
but it's not going to be like it was. Mm -hmm. And so this this move into suburbs, this move to telecommute uh, is real, long lasting and long term. And so cities around the nation that got used to a very high level of tax revenue and a very high level of mass transit in for work are going to have to deal with that. I mean, New York City, I, if my numbers are right, it was like four and a half million people was the population of New York. But every day, another three and a half million people commuted into the city to work. Wow. And so this is a phenomenal influx of capital that shows up in mass transit in terms of buying tickets for the subway and the bus or whatever. People buying a cup of coffee, buying lunch, doing whatever they do, taking their shoes to get repaired, shopping at stores and tax revenue. I, depending on where you live, this might not hit your radar, but if you work in a city like New York, you have to pay the New York City income tax. And so you can live in Jersey, but you are paying New York State income tax and New York City income tax. And so once you're no longer crossing the bridge, you're not paying those taxes anymore. Yeah. And so believe me, New York City in particular, New York State uh, to an extent are going to feel a huge tax hit from this. Yeah, I think I saw Governor Cuomo basically begging people to come back, essentially. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He was saying he would take hedge fund managers to dinner, right? And uh, in New York City, their estimate is they're going to be now $9 billion. $9 billion. It's a big number for just a city. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's, so something, it's certainly a trend we will keep our eye on. 